Okay, welcome to 10.3. Um, today we're going to be factoring trinomials. So, so far we've done um, binomials and with binomials, usually the only thing you can do is a GCF unless they fit one of those special patterns that we were talking about in the last unit. We won't spend a lot of time getting into any special patterns this year, but you will do a lot more when you get into Algebra 2. Um, but you might notice some of those as we work through the lesson today. So you want the next um, guided notes, which should say 10.3 factoring trinomials. Um, if you don't have them, you can just copy them on a piece of paper, but I think it's helpful to have them. Um, what's tricky about um, the way our math is set up in America is that we go from algebra one to geometry to algebra two, and the chances are of the chances of you using this next year is slim, but you'll definitely use it the following year. So it's kind of nice to hang on to your notes. Um, Okay, so a trinomial, an example of a trinomial is up here in the box here. Um, there's technically an A in front of X squared. Um, the B is in front of X and the C is the constant. But this lesson notice is when A equals one. So there's a one X squared in every problem. Once you throw a coefficient into X squared, um, the factoring becomes quite a bit more difficult. And there's like, 10 different methods for how to do it, but we will do that next time. So you've done those diamond problems. We did them uh, like in the last unit, and then you also did some today as the warm up. Well, the diamond problems were set up to help you solve these types of problems. So remember, factoring is rewriting something as the product of two things. And if you remember from last unit, a lot of the factoring of trinomial, when you multiply two binomials together, you got a trinomial. So since factoring is the opposite, our answer today is going to be two binomials, okay? Now, the patterns are consistent the entire time, and that's what we're going to look at and discover, and then you're going to get a lot of practice. If there's one thing that you know how to do really quickly, it would be factoring trinomials, when A is one especially, um, kind of like your times tables. There's nothing to memorize, but you want to memorize how to do it, not all the numbers, and there's no way to do that since they're all different. Okay, so what we're looking for there's kind of a process to this, and you can develop your own process as we go. I'm gonna show you what I think is a great beginning process, and if you find a way to do it further on, that's fine. Um, but a lot of people tend to get these problems wrong because of their signs. So that's what we're gonna focus on, and I think this problem kind of eliminates, this process I'm gonna show you eliminates any sign issues. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do, it says here to factor a trinomial that's in that highlighted form, you have to find two integers that multiply to make C, so C is your third term, and that add up to make your middle term. Okay, so remember in the diamond problems, you had to multiply to make the top and add to make the bottom. Um, that's why we were practicing that. So if I look at example one, my C is 12 and my B is seven. So I'm looking for factors of 12 that make seven. Now, you might have thought right away, it's three and four. Okay, now here's the tricky part. There are sometimes multiple options that work. So I recommend making a list. And especially if you get stuck and you're like, I can't find the factorization of that. Um, if you have your list, you can go down systematically and see which ones you've checked and which ones you haven't checked. So again, if your process is not to make the list, um, I'd at least give it a shot before you can like totally not do it um, because it is really helpful. And one of the examples we're gonna look at is definitely people get wrong because they automatically go to the first one, but it doesn't work because of the signs. So off to the side, I like to write what C is. C is 12. Factors of 12 are one and 12. So one times 12 makes 12. Two times six makes six. And three times, oh, two times six makes six. Two times six makes 12. And three times four makes 12. So notice I like to go systematically what one times what, two times what, three times what. I like to go in order. Okay, that's just me. Okay, then I look at the list and I ask myself, self, which of those numbers add up to B, which is seven? And you were right. If you said three and four at the beginning, I am going to use those. Okay, so because it's a trinomial, my answer is going to be the product of two binomials. I set up reverse FOIL. So remember, FOIL was when we did first outside, inside, last. So I set it up. The only way to make x squared is x times x. So I'm gonna put an x in the first parentheses and an x in the second parentheses. Uh, we decided on three and four, so I plug in a three and a four. Doesn't matter where you put them, okay? I just put them in the order they are in my little list under 12. Now, the last thing I have to figure out is the signs. I have a positive 12 right here. So I know what are two ways to make positive 12 with numbers, with the numbers three and four. 
three times four and negative three times negative four. So we've got to decide on our signs. So then I looked at my B term. My B term is also positive. So I don't want to go with the negative three and the negative four. I want to go with the positive three and the positive four. Therefore, I'm going to put a plus three and a plus four. Now, notice it says check your answers using FOIL. It's a really good idea to multiply it back out, make sure you got the right answer. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that in another color really fast. X times X is X squared. X times four is four X. Three times X is three X. Three times four is 12. Those middle terms do make seven X, so I feel confident with my answer, okay? If you wanna do that check um, mentally, that's fine too, not a big deal. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, this time, my C is a five. So make my factors a five. Oh, this one's kind of nice because it's just one set. Okay, well, I gotta go with those. So K, in parentheses, K and K. And try to use the letter they give you. If you accidentally put X every time, not a big deal, but it's kind of nice if you use the letter in the problem. I'm gonna plug in my one and my five, and I'm gonna check my signs. Positive five positive six. So it's going to be plus one plus five. K times K is K squared. I get five K, one K. That makes six K. One times five is five. Okay. Well, let's look at number three. I got factors of 24. So that's going to be quite a few actually. One and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. And yeah, it stops there. So I'm looking for a negative 11. So it looks like I need eight and three. Okay, so I set up my foil, I get an X and an X, I get a three, I get an eight. Okay, so again, I need a positive 24, which means my signs have to be the same to because of two numbers multiplied together um, to make a positive have to be the same. But this time I need a negative 11. So a negative three plus a negative eight makes a negative 11, and a negative three times a negative eight makes a positive 24. So there's my answer. Okay, so I, that's another little trick that I just did. I looked at um, negative three, and I added it to negative eight, and I got my negative 11, and then I multiplied negative three by negative eight, and I got my positive 24. So that's another way to check it without having to multiply it out, okay? If it's easier, go multiply it out. I'd rather you take the 30 seconds to multiply it out and get it right than be like, boom, it's right, and then it's not. Okay, cool, last one. Um, factors of 50, so I'm looking at my C. 50 is gonna be one and 50, two and 25, uh, five and 10. I think that's all we got. Yeah, okay, trying to make a negative 15 here, so I'm gonna go with the five and the 10, and I'm gonna set it up with my M and my M, and my five, and my 10. They both need to be negative since my B is negative, so I get a negative five and a negative 10. Now let's check. A negative five plus a negative 10 does make a negative 15, and a negative five times a negative 10 does make a positive 50. So that's my answer. Okay, forgot to box that one. All right, so we just factored trinomials where the sine of C was positive. These are the easier ones to do. So let's fill in this little chart here because it's kind of your go-to if you get stuck later. So if the sine of C is positive, meaning your last term is positive, that means that the signs in the parentheses are the same. If B is negative, they're both negative. If B is positive, they're both positive. Okay, so. Take a minute, I don't care if you do blue or green, I want you to do those four on your own problems, okay? Keeping in mind, watch the signs, make your list of C, figure out which ones will give you B when you add them, and then check back in just a second. So hit pause and come back. All right, welcome back. Here are the solutions. I'm only gonna keep them up here for a second, so pause the screen so you can check them really fast. Okay, cool. Hopefully you didn't have any questions. If you do, that's fine. Just zoom me and let me know what's going on, okay? All right, cool. Now let's talk about if C is negative, okay? These are a little bit trickier. Um, and well, let's just jump in. So the process is the same. I still have to find factors of C that add up to B. So I'm still finding factors of negative 18 that make a positive three. 
So let's start by listing our factors. We've got 18. So I got 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, 4 and, just kidding, there's no 4, 5, 6. Okay, that's it. That's my list. Okay, so, I, so now here's what's tricky. Last time we just added them together, right? This time they could be added or subtracted. So 1 and 18 could give me 17, 18 minus 1, or negative 17, 1 minus 18, or it could give me 19, negative 1, or 1 plus 18, or it can give me negative 19, negative 1 plus negative 18. Okay, so there's four options here. So I'm looking for a combination that's going to give me my three. Okay, 9 and 2 are going to give me 11 and 7, 6 and 3 are going to give me 9 and 3. So I'm going to go with my 6 and my 3. Okay, now I set it up the same. So set up my n and an n. I plug in a 3 and a 6, doesn't matter where they go. The key to this is the signs. Okay, so I know I need a negative answer. I'm multiplying two numbers together to make a negative. So one of them has to be negative. My middle term is positive. So which of the terms do you think should be made positive? So when you add them together, you get a positive three. So think about it for a sec. Hopefully you said the six, okay? A positive six and a negative three give me a positive three. And a positive six times a negative three gives me a negative 18, okay? So there's, again, I just did that check. Now, if you switched them up, you would have got a negative three in, and all you'd have to do is switch the signs. Not a big deal. Okay, last one um, of these. Let's look at find factors of 30. So 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, uh, 5 and 6. I don't even start thinking, I don't even look at what my B is until I've made my whole list. Sometimes people see that first one and just stop and plug it in and it doesn't work. So make the whole list, exhaust all your factors for 30, and then go back and see what you're trying to find. I'm trying to make a 7. So I get either 29 and 31, cross that off. 17 and 13, cross that off. 3 and 10, um, that's a potential. And 5 and 6, I get 1 and 11. So here's what I'm going with. 3 and 10 give me a 7. Okay, so set up my foil, x, x, plug in my 3, plug in my 10. Now, the c is negative, so one they're going to have one of each, right? And this time my middle term is negative, so which of the factors, 3 or 10, should get the negative? Hopefully you said the 10. A negative 10 plus 3 gives me a negative 7, and a negative 10 times 3 gives me a negative 30. Okay, so there was a pattern in these last problems. Hopefully you noticed it, but if not, that's why we're going to fill it out together. Not a big deal. Um, so if the sine of C is negative, the signs and the parentheses are different. Let me just make sure that's what I put last time. Yeah, they're different. If B is negative, so notice back here, we put this positive sign with the 6, and we put this negative sign with the 10. Which number got the sign of B? The bigger number. Yeah, so if B is negative, the sign, the negative sign goes with the bigger number. If B is positive, the positive sign goes with the bigger number. So you still find your factors, one's positive, one's negative, and the sign of B goes with the bigger number in your binomials. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, cool. So there's two more on your own before we go into the last set of problems that um, ties in the GCF that we talked about previously. So here you can either do a green or a blue on your own. And notice that I added a little bit to blue. There's a second um, variable at the end. So just see if you can figure out what that might look like. Again, pause the video and then I'll show you what the solutions are. Um, and then you can check and see how you go and see if you need to um, zoom me and ask some questions. Okay, so hit pause. Okay, here are the solutions. Again, I'm not going to spend much time on them, so hit pause to check yours, and then you can unpause to keep going. Okay, cool. 
Um, last thing, let's talk about what do you do if it, there's a GCF? So the more we learn ways to factor, we always go back to the beginning and that is a GCF. Anytime you can take out something that's common to all the terms, A, you make the problem easier and B, you actually make it solvable. Sometimes it's not even solvable until you pull out the GCF. Okay, now here's the thing that, that you have to keep in mind is the GCF has to be a part of your answer in order for it to multiply back out to what you started with. So what a lot of people tend to do is they leave the GCF behind. So no GCF left behind, okay? So I look at example number seven, what's the GCF in all three terms? Hopefully you see it's a four, okay? So I'm gonna pull out a four first. So I get pull out a four from the first term, a four from the second term, a four from the third term. Also, here's a little hint. Remember I told you we're only gonna factor when the squared term has a one in front. That's a good indication that there's a GCF, okay? Later when we know how to factor when A isn't one, it'll be a little trickier, but for now, if there's a number in the front, you gotta pull something out. Okay, so pull out my four. When I rewrite it, I get four parentheses, N squared plus three N plus two. Okay, now, now I have a new C, my C is two and my B is three. So the only factors of two are one and two. Okay, so I get n squared, or I get n, I get an n, I get a 2, I get a 1, okay. Um, C is positive, so they're going to be the same, and B is a 3, so they're both plus. Okay, am I missing anything? If I multiply n plus 2 times n plus 1, do I get back what I started with? Uh-uh, I forgot the GCF. So you've got to make sure and pull the GCF down with you, and that's your final answer. So n times 2, n plus 2 times n plus 1 gives me the trinomial right above it, but it doesn't give me the original trinomial. So you've got to include that GCF. So I'm going to put a little note here. This is on my guided notes um, on line 2. Uh, must include... Uh, the GCF. When the problems get longer, I'll show you a little trick for like bringing them along. For now, there's, there are only going to be two steps, but that's one of the more common mistakes is people leave those out. Okay, cool. So let's look at number eight. Um, what is the GCF that's common to all three of those terms? Five. Okay, so let's pull out a five. Um, so I get five parentheses x squared minus 3x, 5 goes into 120 times, 5 goes into 48 times, so I get minus 28. Okay, so factors of 28 are 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 3, nope, not 3, uh, 4 and 7, and I think that's it. Okay, I'm trying to make 3, so I'm going to go with 4 and 7. Okay, so remember, bring my GCF down, there's my 5, set up my foil, I get an X and an X, I get a four and a seven. Now I gotta find my signs. So C is negative, so one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative. Three is also negative, so that means the negative sign goes to the bigger number, so I'm gonna give it to the seven. So I'm gonna double check, negative seven plus four does make negative three, and negative seven times four does make negative 28, and then I got my GCF in there, so I'm good. Okay. All right, one more because it's just a little bit more difficult. Um, GCF of number nine, two and a B. So this time I got to pull out a variable along with a number. So two B, two B, or not two B. <laughs> um, I get my two B in the front and I have left uh, B squared plus five B plus six. Okay, so let's list factors of six. We've got one and six and two and three. Okay, I'm trying to make a five. Which of those makes a five? One and six or two and three? Ooh, they both do. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky, okay? One and six can only work if the signs are different. Two and three can only work if the signs are the same. So I have to look at what the signs should be in my problem. This C term is positive, which means the signs have to be the same, which means I add them together, and 6 plus 1 makes 7, so I can't use that one. This is one of the tricky ones that people miss a lot. I've got to use 2 and 3, 
So I've got my two B in the front. I got my B, got my other B, and I got my two and my three. Um, C is positive and B is positive, so I put a plus sign on both of them. All right, so be looking for problems like that in um, the homework because they do show up with different ones. Six is usually the most common one, but they do show up. Okay, so you have one more on your own. Pause the video, I'll give you the solution in just a second. And then there is no differentiated homework tonight. Um, and it does look kind of long, but these don't go very, these don't go very, I mean, they go fast. I don't know what I'm trying to say. They go fast, so it's good to get extra practice. Okay, so just blow through it. Let me know if you have questions. Um, the last six are good because of the GCF, and then there's some optional blue problems. So sorry, I don't like blue to be extra, but in this case it is. So do it if you're up for it. If not, don't worry about it. But I figured it's not that bad since you got a couple extra, you got extra days. Okay, so hit pause and check, try on your own number seven. All right, welcome back. Here's the solution for on your own number seven. Okay. So good luck in the homework. Please let me know if you have questions and I hope you enjoy factoring trinomials. They're actually, I think they're kind of fun. <laughs> See ya.